In this walkthrough, I will show you how you can use the Team Services extension for Visual Studio Code to connect to your TFS 2015 update to and later Git repositories. To connect to the TFS server, we're going to use NTLM authentication on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So I have the extension installed here, and I'm going to go ahead and open a Git repository for uh, 2015 update to repository Git Java. Go ahead and select that folder. When that folder opens, the extension will run, and you'll notice that it doesn't have any credentials for that particular Team Foundation server, so it's asking me to run the Team Login command. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss that message in the Run Team Login. And it gives me a prompt that says I need to provide the username for that particular server. And this is the server that I can clone the repository from. So it's been pre populated on Windows with my domain and username. Go ahead and hit enter there and they'll provide my password. As soon as I do that, you can see down in the status bar that the extension is connected to the TFS server such that I can see my team project, my pull requests, the build status, uh, and the bugs that are assigned to me. So I can go ahead and click those just like I could before. I can see the bugs that are assigned to me and I can click on each one of those and the web browser will open and take me straight to that particular work item. So since we're asking for credentials, we're storing those um, securely on the client machine. So on Windows, we store those in the Windows Credential Store. On Mac, we store them in the, uh, the Keychain. And on Linux, we store them in a file, um, which is in a subfolder, the user's home folder. That file is um, secured with uh, read-write permissions only for the user that's actually running Visual Studio Code. So as you can see, that's what happens when I can run against a uh, TFS 2015 Update 2 server. Now when I try to open a repository that is in pre-update 2, it will still ask me to authenticate. So I'll get that same message since I haven't gone to that server yet. So I run team login to log in there. There's my username and I provide my password. And down in the status bar you'll see a message that says this extension only supports TFS version 2015 update 2 or later, so verify your TFS server version. That's the message that I'll, that I'll get if you if you get a update to um, or prior to update to Team Foundation server. So let me go back in and open that other repository that I had before. And once I do that, I won't be prompted for credentials since the credentials uh, would have been found in the Windows Credential Store. So as you can tell here in just a second, there the status bar has been updated, uh, the extension is loaded, and all my information is back here. So that's just a quick overview of connecting to uh, TFS 2015 Update 2 and later. Now the, the secure storage of credentials will also help um, against team services. So now if I open a folder here that is a repository that I've cloned from team services, raise a deep space, I go ahead and I open that. We'll look in the credential store to see if we have the proper uh, credentials or any credentials for that. And you can see there's no personal access token was found for team services and I have to log in. So I'll dismiss this, but also notice in the settings of that JSON file, I don't have any um, personal access tokens listed here uh, any longer. So I don't need to put those in there with the latest version of the token. So I can go ahead and click down here and also that will run the, the login command. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my personal access token here. And once I do that, you can see I get authenticated and all the information comes back in here. And again, here in my settings.json, there was nothing written. Nothing, I didn't write anything there, so there's still no uh, personal access tokens in the settings file. Now, if you currently use the extension and you update to this particular version, the extension will read uh, the personal access tokens that are currently in your settings.json's file and use that. It will also persist it into credential storage. However, it will continue to use the one that's in your settings.json file until you remove it. Once you remove it, it will default and use the ones back in the credential store. So if you forget that it's uh, you've updated the version and it's pulling it out of the credential store, if you go ahead and you update uh, your personal access token or your add new ones to your settings.json file, uh, it'll continue to use those. At some point in the future we'll, we'll remove that functionality, but for now we're deferring to any personal access tokens in the settings.json file. 
that said, if you remove them, they can, you can be logged in as well. Last thing I want to show is the fact that you can also log out. And when you're in the logout command, you'll see that um, when we try to connect up again, there's no personal access token for Team Services, and you obviously have to, you have to log in again. What this will also do is remove that particular credential from the credential store. Uh, so that's a quick walkthrough of the new support for Team Foundation Server 2015 and the Secure Credential Store. Thanks for watching.